why hymns? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I'm I'm not really into hymns. Well, I am. I am into hymns because of how they feel. But I'm more so into hymns because of the stories they tell. Um, there's so much history, and I and you know when we have the conversation of hymns, you know, especially with this generation, you know, they feel like the style and the core changes, you know, are not necessarily of what's happening today. And so they're really not interested, you know? So for me, I'm more interested in the hymns because of the history. Um, I'm interested in those that actually wrote the hymns, when they wrote the hymns, why they wrote the hymns. And it, it gives me a different meaning when I actually play the hymn. And so when people say, Tim always playing hymns, this, that's really the reason why, you know, I play, I play hymns. Who are some of my musical influencers? I got so many. Well, um, let me think. I grew up in a um, small town that I think is a big town. You know, I love my city, um, Akron, Ohio. And um, I grew up at what's now Faith Place. I grew up at was First Apostolic Faith Church. And um, Sister Neville's, from Sister Neville's to Sister Bailey to um, my big brother, Wayne Smith, rest in peace to Johnny Neville's, to Brother Brown, to Cortez Barnes. You know, that's, and, and, and a lot of people don't even know that, you know, I started out, you know, if anybody laughs, we're gonna have an issue. But I started out playing the guitar. Um, anybody that grew up at, you know, my home church, you know, remember my plastic guitar when I was three years old, sitting on the front row with my grandmother and uh, my grandfather. And then I really didn't start playing keys all until like uh, going into like eighth, ninth grade. Um, because, you know, I played the violin, I played the viola. I know I say viola because most people don't know what the viola is. So it's the violin. Um, all throughout my um, middle school, elementary, high school, I played the violin. So when you hear me play, um, you can hear the, the classical training, um, the, the classical, you know, the background that I have. And so, um, that was in my early childhood. And then I have those like, uh, my big brother, Will Smith. Now, Will Smith, Will Smith was really the one that introduced me, um, to that set in the atmosphere, that worship experience. And um, Will was really the one, you know, that kind of showed me how to move in and out, you know, certain certain realms, if that's what y'all want to call it, of the, of the spirit. But Will was definitely um, one of my biggest influencers, musical influencers. And then you got uh, Mark Jackson. It's another Ohio native. Mark, even though we're close to age, Mark was one who I really wanted to play like. You know, Mark was like five years old, bringing in glory. Like, <laughs> like Mark was the one we used to just sit back and watch how s the simplicity of his playing, but it, 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 it carried such a strong presence that like Mark, Mark was just different, you know, and he was young doing it. And that was really who I said, I want to model even to this day. You know, I want to model my plan after uh, Mark Jackson. And then I met the terror. He's a terrorist. I call him the terrorist of music. Uh, my brother, Phil Jones. And this is kind of like, you know, um, when I first moved to Cleveland, 
um, I was like, I think like 18, 19 years old. Uh, and he kind of like took me under his wing. Everybody know Phil is one of the greatest to ever do it. I think he's one of, he's an absolutely incredible um, musician. And he was the one that said, hey, you plan the song right, you plan the hymn right, but your chords ain't right. Your melody is right, all of that. And he was showing me how to navigate um, the, you know, the correct way on how to play the hymn. Um, and I didn't move too fast. I forgot I got Darrell Williams. I got Brandon Scarborough, uh, Damian Cersei. You know, I was really, let me say something about Cersei, Darrell, and Brandon. You know, I was saved. To be honest, I was real saved. But once I got around them guys, them, them guys, they was Baptists, they was all types of stuff. And there's nothing against the Baptist folk, but y'all not saved. You know, once I got around them guys, they kind of like, wait, started to introduce me to stuff. And I wasn't, I, I wasn't introduced to that stuff. You know, I was saved, sanctified, holy, baptized, Jesus name, all that stuff. And then I, once I got around them, I ain't been right since. <laughs> they gonna kill me. Um, then I got my brother Shannon Wainwright. I got uh, Donnie Thompson. Even though, you know, you know, Donnie, I know when you see this, you know, you're going to feel a way, but you was never better than me, Donnie. You know, <laughs> coming up, you were good. You know, coming down from Cleveland, you was very arrogant. Donnie Thompson was very arrogant. You know, they, they, they thought they was going to come down to Akron and just take over. They did in a way, you know, but then was my brother, Shannon Wainwright, man. You know, he he was so structured. He was another sergeant, a musical sergeant. If, if anybody know, worked with Shannon in any type of way, you knew how mean Shannon was. He was just always, something was always wrong. Still to this day, you know. Um, who else? Some of my musical influencers. Eric Barhill, how can I not? My, that's, not that's my big, big brother. He's 60 years old now. Eric Barnhill, he gonna kill me. Um, raised me, honestly, man, in music, man. Um, my whole family humbly submitted. Um, they allowed me to be a part of their family at a very young age um, with Booby and Winnie and all the other amazing Cleveland uh, musicians. Um, the diversity of music that they chose and you know eric eric was another one didn't let to let stuff slide you know you had to learn the music how i was you know uh played and um who else i got so many musical influence and i'm scared honestly to leave people off um i know once i, I moved to uh new york city um so lady, some of y'all probably won't even know, but she was huge. Her name was Kathy Hutchinson. Kathy Hutchinson, honestly, y'all, was one who, like, caused me to really tap into the hymns. Because, you know, I was at an amazing church under amazing uh, leader, um, Pilgrim Church um, in Brooklyn. New York, and we used to have to um, go in for office hour. I still don't understand what was that all about, Pastor Dad, when well, you had us going in. But I'm glad we had to go in because Kath Kathy Hutchinson sat down with me and my brother Quan, and we used to have to go through the hymn book, and I learned a lot of hymns that I didn't know um, sitting under Kathy. Um, Stanley Brown, man, what can I say? Um, Stanley really helped shine a light on what I was able to bring to the table uh, because New York, man, New York is tough if you don't have a person that can help you, you know, um, what, 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 what I want to say, like help you, I don't want to say be known, 
but they introduce you to places where you probably wouldn't be able to introduce yourself. If it was just, your, you know, you coming to, and Stanley Brown, man, as soon as I, I mean, my first year um, in Brooklyn, Stanley Brown had me in front of so many artists and gave me so many opportunities. It's like Stanley was absolutely um, one of the biggest musical influencers. Um, this one it will probably will shock a lot of people. Um, my ex mother in law, Dr. Belinda Scott. by far one of my biggest musical influencers. And I'm, I, many of y'all will understand when I say this, um, but she was tough in the spirit ram. In the ram of the spirit, I would say it like that. She was tough, man. And she would, she, she was like, the, a, a master at knowing how to navigate like in and out like the major and the minor chords and I that stuff didn't make sense to me until I really started to understand and you know sometimes when I when her used to operate I used to get offended because she would never let me just it, nothing was I could never just let her she never just let it slide like and so you know she will be definitely in my top five all time um, because of the way I play today and the way I operate, one of the biggest reasons was definitely because of my um, ex-mother-in-law, Dr. Belinda Scott. She was incredible. I got so many, man. Um, I hope I didn't miss nobody. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking y'all, y'all didn't caught me off guard. What biggest in- musical influencers? Meacham Clark. Um. Meacham Clark and my bishop, my big brother, um, Rudolph McKissick. When I moved to Jacksonville, Florida, um, Meacham Clark, man, has a style that I wasn't really, you know, he, if if anybody know Meacham, Meacham is really different than most musicians. His approach, his he's another one that know how to really navigate in and out the major and the minor keys and knowing how to play. It, Meacham is incredible. Meacham could take a, a hymn that's major and somehow, I don't know how he do it, he'd make it minor and it's like, oh my gosh. You know, um, Meacham was, is definitely one of my biggest musical um, influencers. And uh, Bishop McKissick, man, you already know, he is like, he's all everything from preaching to the music and just being under his ministry has really taken my musical um, career or my, my um, the way I think about the hymns, even because when you, if you've ever been to Bethel, for those that go to Bethel, y'all know we like, we can go from a hymn to a CCM, to a uh, old uh, spiritual, to to the gospels, we can do that all to a praise break. <laughs> we can do all of that in a, in a, in a fifteen minute span. So man, um, yeah. So Bishop McKissick is definitely one of my biggest musical influence. I got so many y'all. Uh, like honestly, I'm I'm probably not even naming half of them. This probably ain't one for of them, but I just, uh, off the top of my head, definitely some of my biggest musical influencers. Mm. That's a real loaded question. I'm going to tell you why. Working with Rich Talbert, one, was, was bigger than music. Like, Rich, Rich is like, and, and to this day, was like my brother, like legit brother. Um, I met Rich through um, Gene Tolbert. Um, I really forgot how that setup went, but I, I remember I, it was something going on in the Bronx, and I think I was filling in for Gene. 
like Gene was huge. Like I could never leave Gene, Gene out. Um, and somehow it all connected together. It was a group. What was the name of that group? Um, La, oh my God, I forgot the name of the group. But Rich was in the group, it was four of them. Uh, I imagine Nate was in the group, Kenny, and I forgot the other, uh, they was great. I'm absolutely, was it like LaVray something? Something! I forgot the name of the group. And Rich Rich was doing this thing called um, uh, Campfire. And the uh, Tim Reddick, he didn't have, it was all of them. Chandler, um, Tim, um, uh, I think it was, what was his name? Dante Bowe. Um, Daryl Walls. They all used to come to New York. And we used to do campfire, and you know, me, me and Rich connected like strong man. Um, he was an absolutely incredible. When I say absolutely incredible worshiper, um, and then somehow I don't know what happened with Rich in the Bronx, but the opportunity opened where he was able to come to Pilgrim. And that's when the, the serious chemistry uh, took place with the hymns and coming up with so many different songs uh, on, on the spot. Um, it was crazy because, you know, we used to post our videos, our worship video, and they used to just take off because honestly, in New York, you know, when I when I when when I think about New York, I, I think of the praise and the, you know, uh, my brother Vincent. Vincent is absolutely incredible. The Hezekiah Walkers and different ones. And here come Rich, you know, with this 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 high worship. And I won't I won't say it's not familiar to the 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 area, but it was it was different. And, you know, we grew that thing and it just got like huge. I remember when, I, when Rich gave, when Rich first did um, Miracle Worker um, and Gene called and asked, you know, you know, if I could play the piano on that, that was our first record we did. And then um, we did the live recording. Y'all know to never be defeated. and. Um, all those incredible songs. So working with Rich, bro, that that was like everything. And it kind of like highlighted, you know, what I was able to do musically, um, especially, you know, um, never be defeated. And it's like, it's amazing when you hear, well, I done been so many places and seen it online and I hear people playing what I actually played. You know, that's an incredible feeling. You know, so yeah, man, Rich was my brother. I love my brother. Um, you know, we ain't talked in a minute. Um, and I, and I, it's crazy that you asked me about Rich. Uh, certain, some, certain things transpired, you know, in my transition from Brooklyn um, to Jacksonville. And honestly, I will actually take the blame for it. You know, because certain things you, you, you just don't know, you know, when you're dealing in this music game and when, when certain things not in place, they will not necessarily just hurt you musically, but they can hurt the relationship you have when, with an individual. And you know, the, the, what the old school saying was, that was nothing but the devil. Because man, me and Rich, we was we was tight, man, and um, you know that was what it was, and it is what it is today. You know we talk, we text, and you know we good. So that's what it was like working with Rich. I gotta tell this story. So I remember. This is gonna trip y'all out. It had to have been like 2010, 11, either 2010, 11, 12. I can't actually remember the year. But I was down in uh, Orlando, Florida. 
I was actually, I was with my uh, ex-father-in-law, um, Dr. Scott, and we was at the T.D. Jakes Pastor, Pastor Leadership Conference. And um, it had to be about six, 7,000 people um, in the room. And I, I remember we were sitting on the side and um, he looked on the stage um, and <laughs> it's crazy. Pastor uh, Paula White was preaching. He looked on the stage and he said, hey, where is uh, Paula White's musician? I'm like, shoot, mm-hmm. And I'm young, you know, he's like, man, go up there. I'm like, what do you mean go up there? And I remember I just said, it had to be about six, 7,000 people. And we had Bishop T.D. Jakes, pastor and leadership conference. And he said, man, just, just go up there. And I'm in my mind, I'm like, no, nah, cause as soon as I start walking towards the, the stage, they're going to tackle me. He said, man, skip that. So he said, follow me. I said, wait, what? <laughs> so we walking behind the curtain. And I'm like, my heart pounding. I'm talking about, I'm nervous as heck, cause he's serious. He was like, he, it like, like Dr. Scott was like the definition of like radical faith. Like if he, if he think or believe he can do it, like his faith is, and so, and he was about that, about his family too. So we get around the, the, the curtain headed towards like the band pit. And so the security was on the other side. I'm like, man, this is gone. This is clown stuff, right? He goes up to the security guard and say, hey, this, this, this Paul White's a musician. I'm like, wait, what? He said, oh, okay, cool. Going up, going on the stage, right? So in the middle of her sermon, in front of 7,000 people, you see me walking across the middle of the stage. And so I'm sitting at the keyboard. I, when I, when I, I wanted to throw up, because now I'm looking out in the audience and these people are just staring at me, looking at me, like who was this kid sitting on the stage, right? And so I'm, I'm, I'm going through the keyboard and I'm trying to put my sounds in. And so, <laughs> I look my I look at my phone. He texts me, "Hey man, play, quit farting around." So I'm like, I'm shaking, I'm nervous. And he said, "Man, what 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 do you have to lose?" Right? So she started doing this illustrated sermon. This is crazy. And I had my strings, I had everything I had set up, and it had something to do with with the with the. She had something to do with these balls she had on the stage and she was bouncing these like basketballs. Oh, they weren't basketballs, it was something crazy. And I ain't gonna lie, me and Paula White got to work. God will heal, God will restore, God will deliver, God will repair, God will replace. Come on, breathe. Drink, 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 drink. There's a well of life. That was like, monumental for me that was like and so afterwards i get off the stage and i see um the the the, the security i'm like i'm going to jail it's over why did my ex why why did he why did he do this and so the man say um this late young lady wants to, to speak with you it was paula white's assistant and she's like pastor paula want to see you now I'm like, this is about to be bad. I get to the back. She said, who are you? Heart, y'all know I'm ready. My heart, I'm about to have a heart attack. I said, my name is Tim, Tim Clinton. She said, where are you from? Um, I said, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. She said, I just want to tell you, you are the most incredible musician I've ever heard. I'm sitting there like, wait, what? And so, you know, you got to play the, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, right? She said, do you travel? Um, I was like, no, nah, I'm, 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 I'm the minister of music at my uh, in-laws uh, church in Cleveland. She's like, do you, uh, like, would you think about, like, traveling? I said, absolutely. 
She was like, well, I want you to travel with me. Now, in that, that, that moment where my ex-father-in-law said, what, what's the worst, just, just go up there and do it. That turned into me playing for two women that are loose. Me and Paul White probably have ministered, was it, how many states is it, 50? I done played in well over 30 states, hundreds of cities. I mean, some of the biggest stages. And here's the thing, some of the biggest stages didn't have a lot of people. I want y'all to catch that. Some of the biggest stages didn't have a lot of, a lot of people. I didn't play all over um, this country with, with Paul White. So that was like the first thing that, you know, as far as my national, when, if you want to know who was one of the big national influencers, um, it was Paul White for sure. Mm. I can I would honestly, you know, I know we got the lights and the cameras and it's, it would be easy for me to create something or say something and we just move to the next question. And, you know, but truthfully, it's not that great. Um, and the reason that it's not great has nothing to do with her. Um, I, I will put all that blame on myself, you know. Um, you know, I got I got married young, and um, in my marriage, you know, stuff happened um, in the marriage that was really, really my fault. And I'm I'm really an excuseless person, so I don't really use that. That um, since I was very young, that's the reason. No, you know, I knew better, and I should have done better. You know, it's life. And when I got divorced, because you know, if you, if you ask me, me, you know, I thought I was like an incredible father. When, when I was married. And after the divorce, it felt like everything just fell apart, you know? And once I moved to um, New York City, um, you know, living that life, it's, it was a steady grind. It wasn't nothing easy about it. And while I was trying to do me, I kind of really hurt the relationship with my daughter. I could have, I could have did more. I could have tried harder, um, but I didn't. And so, um, with 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 where we are now, you know, we we text, you know, we tell each other we love each other, and um, the truth the truth of 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 our relationship is. That that really is like one of the biggest burdens of my life is like I, I think I've done some incredible things, uh, you know, as far as my music and as far as how I live and the things that I have done. And but I will give all that away to having a better relationship with my girl because she was really like literally as a child, like my best friend. And, um, you know, that that's my prayer every day. You know, when I wake up, you know, sometimes you, you could focus on a whole lot of different stuff to keep your mind off certain things. But once it hits my mind, hits my spirit, I'll be like, man, I hope it just one day it just all works out. I'm trying, but 
That's what it is. I'm just going to put it out right now. So my birthday is May 12th. This year, that's Mother's Day. It's a Sunday. I'm not going to do that. That's like the typical. But I am going to do it on the 14th of May. I'm releasing the album. And here's what y'all have absolutely, y'all don't know nothing about. I'm releasing my second book, Major Keys, Minor Adjustments. I ain't going to even talk about the book. It's going to be, I'm telling y'all, it's going to be absolutely incredible. Every musician, every singer, every pastor, every worship leader, um, whatever capacity you work in, you're going to need major keys, minor adjustment. So I'm going to release my album, the Him album, and I'm going to release my second book. Um, and minor plug, I know this is my story, but um, I still got my first book out, um, The Heart of a Minstrel. You know, um, let me tell y'all <laughs> about my Heart of a Minstrel book. Um, it's some stuff in that book I don't even believe no more. <laughs> I don't even, some of that stuff. And so I made some, a lot of adjustments, um, even in my own book. So May the 14th, y'all have it. That's it. I no more. I'm not going to let another year go by. Um, the record is done. Uh, I got some incredible singers. I got a lot of different from um, Eli to Josh or to. Um, I got I got so many singers and producers, man, on, on that album. And then. August the 16th, I'm coming home and I am about to record my first live recording. I'm so excited about this live recording because the live recording is has actually been like a dream of mine um, for so long. And you know how you have a dream, you just be thinking about daydreaming like how a, uh, a certain thing could be and how people would receive and react to it. And this is gonna be very special. So August 16th, and I'm going home to where it all started. And um, I got all my friends on board, from the musicians to the singers and some of my favorite uh, songwriters, some of my favorite artists, they're all going to help collab on this. Um, I do it for him, uh, the live experience. So the 14th of May, I do it for him. Volume one, released, done with my book, uh, Major Keys, Minor Adjustments. So be on the lookout. I'm excited.